Gunter Ullmann stood in a hotel lounge in Germany, a country he had fled as a teenager with the rest of his family. Clutching a dozen roses, his fingers tapping nervously over his heart, he waited for someone he hadn't seen in nearly 70 years. By 1938, Adolf Hitler had instituted rules segregating Jews from the rest of the German population. His Nazi party called for vast demonstrations against any Jewish business, any synagogue, against the Jews themselves. Those who had stood in the streets and hailed their leader now marched in the streets, looting and burning Jewish stores and homes, demanding to know from landlords, are there Jews here? The smashed windows gave that night its name, Kristallnacht. The Ullmann's building supervisor, Elfie Uvner's father, took a stand and lied. One thing I should uh, emphasize is uh, that our family uh, very often talked about the way uh, that uh, El El Elfie's father may have saved our lives because on the crystal night when the uh, Nazis uh, came, they came running up the stairs and uh, they uh, went to Mr. Hübner and asked him if there are any Jew other Jews living in the building. Yeah. And that, no. he, he told them there are no more Jews living in the building. And that we felt is, uh, is uh, remarkable and uh, we felt very uh, uh, thankful for, for that. So Father Ullman, uh, the father of Gunter, uh, he desperately sought some way to leave to get his family out. And he went to a travel uh, bureau and asked, where can we go? And he said, you can go to China. You don't need papers for China because he didn't have any papers. He couldn't go anywhere. Uh, and so they said, fine, we'll go to China. The Ullman family spent the war in a Jewish ghetto in Shanghai, China, with more than 20,000 other refugees, finally emigrating to the United States in 1948. Very good friends. Ullmans missed my family together. It was so wonderful to live together in Mannheim. Other people in our house was also from the yeah, Nazi vertrieben uh, or what? Yeah, we were also Jewish and had to yeah. leave. And the other people write to us. We are in the Paris, we are in Schweiz, and not Ullmann's, nix. No word from the Ullmann. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No word from Ullmann. And they were very good friends to us my family and me. In the summer of 2001, there was a nice program, 20-minute program, on this tracing service uh, from the Red Cross. And I thought, my goodness, this is interesting. And maybe uh, this service could be used to, to find some of these people that my mother-in-law continued to talk about. And so I got a form, filled it out, and in fact, I have the form here, and uh, had put the data in for the Ullman family and submitted it. In October of 2008, we're talking seven years plus later, get an email from the folks in San Francisco, Red Cross in San Francisco. We found the Ullman sons. It was a big surprise and we, we were stunned to, to find out about that, that somebody would still be interested in us after all those years. <laughs> Das ist Günther. Ach, oh, mein lieber Grüß. Was warst du so klein und so? Ich bin noch sehr klein. Noch immer sehr klein. It was overwhelming the, the memories and, uh, and uh, what each of us went through and uh, the, the whole, whole life that uh, we shared away from each other and, I mean, did not share, lived away from each other and uh, we have, have enough in common so we can share our stories, which we are doing now for the next 10 days. And I 
certainly hope that uh, it, uh, it doesn't end with the 10 days, that it keeps on going for probably, ho hopefully for the following generations also. Das ist hier und es ist doch wunderbar. And uh, I can only thank the Red Cross for what they did. They didn't give up, obviously. Long story. Yeah. Tell us another story. It's a long story. Okay.